Hey there, welcome back, Shubham this side. Now in this lecture, let us talk about binary trees. So if you talk about trees in general, or even if you search on Google about tree diagram or tree structure, there are chances that you will see binary tree most of the time. Now there is one important thing. You might be thinking how binary tree is different than usual tree or any other tree. So there should be some concept or some important specification that differ binary tree from other trees. Yes, there is. Now the concept of binary tree is simple. Each node can have maximum of two child. So here, if you look at this particular tree, yes, this is a binary tree because maximum we can have two child on a particular node. Here we have maximum two child. Here we have maximum two child. Here we have maximum two child. And then here we have zero child. So it's a binary tree. Now let's talk about other diagram, maybe this one. Is this a binary tree? Nope. Why? Because here we have three child. That means one particular node cannot have more than two child. Maximum we can have two, either zero, one or two. So this is the important concept of binary tree. Now all the other trees that we have been referring to, maybe this one is not, it's just a general tree. Now in future, we are going to talk about types of binary tree and also several stages of it. So here, the first thing is, let us talk about how we are going to implement it. Because till now we have been talking about concept, we have been talking about different term, but how we are going to implement this one. So for that, I have a quick diagram, but before that, let me give you a brief idea. So for each element, we are going to convert it into a node. So if you remember our linked list lecture, what we did is, we converted each element into a node. So suppose this is one node and then we are going to connect them into form of left and right. In the previous link list lecture, what we did is we have next and prev. So like this. So that was one thing we were doing with link list. But here let's talk about how we are going to implement this one. So if I need to convert this into node structure, what we are going to get is this. So here, this is our current diagram in which we have each element is converted into node and then these nodes are connected with each other. Now in linked list, what we used to have is, here I'm taking doubly linked list. So if we have three, we used to have next and then prev. But here in binary tree, what we have is left and right. So this is our node. This is our current node structure. Here we have key or you can call it as data or maybe value. So this is key data value, whatever you want to refer. And then we have right and left. Right will refer to the right child. Left will refer to the left child. So that's how we are going to connect. So it's simple. This is three. Then we have left and right child. That's done. We are connected here. Now this is also a node. So what we are going to have is left and right child. This is the key. Then we have left child as well as right child. It's working fine. But what happened at the leaf node? Since here we have values, but whenever we don't have any child for maybe left, for maybe right, what we are going to do is we are going to store none. Or if you are using any other language, it will be null. Here, if I refer back to my diagram, which is my node structure, since we don't have any left child as well as right child, we are referring to none. That's all. That's the basic simple implementation that will help you a lot with binary tree. So all we are doing is we are carrying three data, the data of that particular node. Then we have data of left and then data of right child. That's it. That's how we are going to design this structure. Now, maybe you have, maybe you don't have this nine here. That means this child doesn't exist. What will happen? So suppose if we don't have this child, So in our diagram, in our node structure, what is going to happen is instead of this node, that is instead of this nine, we are going to actually save none here. That will be fine. Like here we have none. We are going to save none here. That's all. That is going to be the only change and this will not exist here. So I hope you got the idea about how we are going to implement or how we are going to design a binary tree in the form of node structure. So basically we depend on three data and that's it. Now the next thing that we need to discuss, which is pretty important right now is 
types of binary tree. So there are five types, which is full binary tree, then we have complete binary tree, then we have perfect binary tree, then we have balanced binary tree, and then we have degenerate binary tree. So these are the five terms that you just need to be aware of and we are going to discuss each one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out their diagram and then discuss each one of them step by step and how they are different from each other. So let us discuss about the first one which is full binary tree. Now here if we talk about full binary tree, full binary tree is basically a binary tree in which every node has either zero element or two element that means it has zero child or two child. Now here you need to remember that the specific thing about binary tree is we can have maximum of two child only. Now here if I talk about this full binary tree in which we can have either zero or we can have two. There is no between we cannot have one child either we can have zero child or two child. Now if I take this particular example here we have this node we have two child then we have two child, two child, we have two child, we have two child. That's it. Same follows here. This is our node. We have two child, we have two child, we have two child. Now if I take the wrong example, here we have one child. So this is going to be the wrong example. If I talk about this one, we have one child here and this one is missing. If I talk about this one, we have this one missing. So you need to understand in full binary tree, we have one condition that either we have zero child or we have two child. Now the next one is complete binary tree. Now in complete binary tree, all levels are completely filled with nodes except the last one. In the last one, all nodes are left side as possible. So that means if we have zero, one, two level, level zero and level one should be completely filled and level three can have empty childs, but should be left aligned. So here, if I take this particular example, we have this level zero, we have level one, we have level two and level three. On level zero, we have these two child, that's okay. Here we have two child, that's okay. Two child, that's okay. Level zero is completely filled. Level one is completely filled. Level two is completely filled. Level three can be empty but all the nodes should be left aligned. Here we have left aligned. If I talk about this one, this row is completely filled. This level is completely filled. This one is the last one. It can be empty, but all the elements should be left aligned. That means we have two filled here. Then we have here. This one is completely filled. This one is completely filled. This one is completely filled. So that's it. Now if I talk about this one, so here we have First row completely filled, second row completely filled, but third row, you can see we have its child, but this one is empty. So this is a wrong example. If I talk about this one, completely filled, completely filled, but here we have a missing. So that means we need to add a node on its right side. If I talk about this one, completely filled, completely filled, completely filled, but here we need to left align first, then right align. So that's how the logic of complete binary tree works. It means all levels should be completely filled except the last level. And if there are elements in the last level, they should be left aligned. Now here let's talk about perfect binary tree. Now in perfect binary tree, all the internal nodes have two child and the leaf node are at same depth or same level. That means our complete tree should be on a proper structure and should be properly filled. So if we have two levels, all the elements should be filled in this two level. If we have one level, all the elements should be filled. So suppose in this particular example, we have zero, one and two, that is two level. So we have this row completely filled, this row completely filled, this row completely filled. Suppose we have one level, zero and one. This one is completely filled. This one is completely filled. Now, if I talk about these wrong examples, we have this zero, one, two and three. This one is completely filled. This one is completely filled. This one is completely filled. But here, if you see, we have missing child. If I take this another example, this one completely filled, completely filled, but here we have a missing child. So that means your tree should be in a proper structure. In simple way, all the elements in our level should be completely filled. Now the next one I'm going to talk about is balanced binary tree. 
Now, if I talk about balanced binary search tree, it is a bit tricky. In balanced binary tree, we compare height. Now here, the height of left and right subtree of any node cannot differ more than one. That means we have to calculate individual height and then we need to compare their left as well as right side. So here, if I need to calculate the difference of left as well as right, so all I have to do is for each individual element, I have to calculate the difference. So that is the difference will be height of my left child. That is height of my left child minus height of my right child. Now, if the difference is one, that's okay. If the difference is zero, that's okay. But if the difference is greater than one, then we are in trouble. That means that tree is unbalanced. We'll be talking about this uh, again in future. At this point of time, you just have to refer as in balanced binary search tree, we calculate and we depend on height, height of left as well as right subtree. That means if this is our node, this is going to be the left subtree and this is going to be our right subtree. And we calculate height for each one of them and then calculate the difference. So here, if I talk about this node, we don't have any left and right. So the difference is going to be zero. Here, if I talk about this particular node, our difference is going to be one because we don't have any left child, but we have right child. So that means we have one as height. Now, if I talk about this one, it is going to be zero. This one, it is going to be zero. Calculate this one, one. Calculate this, one. We have to compare the left and right. Remember this. And then we are going to again calculate here, which is going to be zero. So that's how we are going to refer. We'll be talking about this again in future, but at this point of time, you just have to understand that we depend on height. And if the difference of left and right subtree is greater than one, then the tree is unbalanced. Now the next one is degenerate binary tree. So if I take any example of any node, so there are chances that we might have only one child for each node. So that means suppose I start here, then I have a left node as child, left node as child, left node as child and keep on following. So if you look at this particular structure, we are just following in the form of linked list. Now, if you remember about the linked list structure, we had something similar. So in degenerate binary tree, every parent node can have only one child and that's it. That's the only condition. So if we have only one child, uh, it can be left, it can be right till that condition, it is fine. So these are all the wrong examples. And you can see we have left child, we have right child, and then again, left child. Till the point we have only one child, it's fine. Now link list is also an example here. Why? Because we follow some similar structure. We have a node, it is have a child, then again it have a child, it have a child and keep on following. So that's the only case that I really wanted to discuss with degenerate binary tree. Now knowing all of them is not pretty important, but you should have some understanding and should be aware about them. I hope this lecture was helpful. Now you have basic idea about binary tree as well as its type. Make sure you refer to resource. Otherwise you are going to get confused with all the different types. So make sure you refer to them. Just go through the definitions that will help you. I hope this lecture was helpful. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about perfect binary tree again, because that's the important one. And we are going to do some calculation and talk about logarithm. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one.